Ashley Westford, two nations. One can be called a footballing heavyweight because they won a World Cup way back, 52 years back. The other team is aspiring to be a heavyweight on the back of this performance at this World Cup. Is that a fair assessment of these two teams? Yeah, I mean, I think any, any team that makes the final is going to go down in history. Obviously, if you win it, even, even more so. Mm. Um, so I think whoever gets there will, will rightly claim that crown and, and it will stick. And, and Croatia, obviously, they came into this tournament with low expectation, like England. A uh, nation of, of not many people, I think four million odd. Um, they have some very good players, obviously playing in in uh, in, in La Liga. Um, but we'll we'll see. We'll see if they're good enough. I think hopefully they might just tire out. Um, and apart from the two main players mm. and Mandzukic, you know the rest for me they're not they're not world class. Okay, form wounds don't matter at this stage, Eugene. Tired legs don't matter. It's about getting on the park, forgetting everything because you never know this opportunity may never come again. Uh, I, would, I would see what you're saying, but then I have to give it. I mean, fatigue could really get into Croatia's, you know, I mean, problem. But, you know, the moment you step on the pitch, you want to give it all, your all. But, you know, it's just when, you, when will your body fail? Mm. That's what's going to create a problem for Croatia. But obviously, when you go there, you want to give your everything. You give your best, no matter what happens, you know. So it's just, just that hindrance for Croatia. Okay, we'll look at those uh, fatigue levels a bit more in detail on the show because let's give you... The lineups uh, which have come our way, the first one is England and, no surprise, a run change from the team that comfortably swept aside Sweden in the quarterfinals. Kyle Walker, Delhi Ali, Ashley Young, Jordan Henderson have all recovered from small niggles. They've been named in the starting 11. Eugene, go with what's worked for you. That's the mantra for Gareth Southgate. Yes, like France, he's been very the players have been very consistent and he's, with, he's gone with the same formation, same players. So, the consistency is very important. In the, you can see in the tournament is very important and the players' confidence is, you know, they, they boost with confidence and now after going through the group stages and knockout mm. stages and they've done really well against Sweden. So, why not go with the same team? Okay, Croatia have made one change uh, to the team that started their quarter-final against Russia. Andrei Kamaric has been replaced by the more defensive-minded Marcelo Brozovic. But in good news for the Croats, right back uh, Sime Warshalko has been deemed fit for this match as has goalkeeper Daniel Subasic, Ashley, lots of quality in the centre of the pitch. You wonder how that back four will shape up against uh, this marauding England lineup. Yeah, I mean, they've obviously got two strong central defenders. Not, not the quickest, Vida's OK. Uh, the big one for me is, is Vasalko. I think if he was out, we did see him come off with a, a knee injury, then they would have been putting Vida at right back and, the, and they may have just found themselves all over the place. The other big plus for them is, is Brozovic comes back in. Uh, they looked a better team when he came on the last mm. game. I think they got the tactics wrong. They expected Russia to be super defensive. They weren't. So they needed uh, that key defensive midfielder on the pitch. And when they did that, that freed up Modric and it freed up Rakitic to go forward and, and influence the final third. OK, those are the opening comments from uh, my two guests here. But let's give you a ground report live from Moscow because we on correspondent Lucy Taylor is there. Lucy, a lot of noise behind you. Yes, uh, perhaps you're one of those screenings. But... Uh, at the top, uh, a bit of divided loyalties for you. Uh, uh, reporters aren't supposed to be biased, but then England have waited for this stage for 28 years. Yeah, absolutely. Not so much divided loyalties, but definitely trying to separate the professional from the personal tonight. Because as you say, this is a huge moment for any England fan. 28 years since the last semi-final. I'm too young even to remember it. Uh, that match has gone down in English folklore. Everybody has heard of it. And it's even longer since the last final, 1966. So every England fan here um, and in England tonight uh, celebrating. We're told that there are thousands of England fans who've travelled here for the match or just to be in Moscow to see it. But the truth is, of course, this is also a special moment for both sides because it, it, Croatia probably didn't expect to be here either. They're battling for their first ever final. So, uh, yeah, fantastic night here, huge occasion, and we'll see what happens. Yes, I can just see uh, some fans uh, around you and also on our screens, uh, Lucy. But tell me one thing. Uh, obviously, everyone's having a party, but are there any waistcoats left in Moscow? Because in our studio, Ashley Westwood has rushed off and found himself a waistcoat as well. So, how's that? How's the the waistcoat production in Moscow this morning? Yeah, I'm sorry if I've let the site down on that score. Yeah, I think there probably are some for sale in Moscow. I haven't seen too many people wearing them here. It's more England shirts and England flags. Uh, but I've heard that that's a, a big thing back in London, back in the UK. 
Here, though, there are a surprising number of not just England fans, but Russian people who are supporting England as well. Um, perhaps surprising given some of the political situations we've had over, this, over the last six months, but people here are getting behind England. I've seen a lot of Russians saying that they're going to support England all the way into the final after Croatia knocked out Russia in the previous round. So, <laughs> yeah, great, great mood here in Moscow. As you say, I'm in one of the uh, biggest and busiest sports bars uh, in central Moscow, and it's just starting to fill up, so I think we're in for a, a good atmosphere tonight. Okay, find a good seat. Find a good seat in front of the television screen if you aren't headed to the stadium and enjoy the game, uh, Lucy. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, just to build on what she was saying, Ashley, it's been a long wait for English fans. They've waited for this, uh, perhaps go back to 1996, Euro 1996, uh, the European Championships in England to see a similar kind of euphoria around an England team. Yeah, I think it's been more the disappointment that's been worse. Um, you know, there's always been a a huge expectation going into either tournament, whether it's Euros, whether it's the World Cup, and we've always believed that we're going to win it or we've got a team to at least get to semi-finals, finals, and it's never quite happened. Last World Cup, you know, we struggled, we didn't really get out of the group, um, but and this time it's the complete opposite. Now it's kind of no expectation, we're playing really well, we're in this semi-final, and it's a little bit of unknown territory for us because, uh, like I say, we, we didn't really expect this, but mm. now all of a sudden, uh, now we're thinking we're going to win it. <laughs> yes, he thinks they're going to win it, but... 90 minutes plus at a time, Eugene stands between immortality and obscurity. Yeah, obviously, like we saw yesterday, you know, the winning team is static. It's a matter of, you know, after you lose, you say, I could have done this, I could have done that. But when you go on the pitch, it's when you have to give your all. It's unlike what Belgium did yesterday. You know, they, they really didn't perform to their potential. So I expect our teams today would try to do the best and, you know, try to avoid those situations. Okay, I'm going to ask both of you direct questions, starting with you. I know you're wearing your waistcoat, so I'm not going to ask you about England. Can Croatia win this, Ashley? Well, of course they can. Uh, you know, England's back three is inexperienced. Uh, really, Kyle Walker's not a natural centre-half. Obviously, we've all witnessed and seen the quality of Rakitic and Modric. Mandzukic has worked really hard without really scoring many goals, so he, he can come to the part and, and provide a real threat and they've also chipped in with goals from set pieces. Vida scored in, in the last game from a set piece so they're a, they're a decent side, they're here on merit. Three, three wins out of three in the group stage so of course they can win it. I don't expect them to. I think England are better you know, man for man. I think we've got a better side. You know, if you take out their four kind of key players I think we have a lot more in the locker. Um, but it's 90 minutes, anything can happen or it might be 120. <laughs> the bias is showing. But do England have the momentum to knock this Croatia team out? Yeah, they do have it. I mean, they have got a very young, youthful, confident side that's looking to create history, to mm. change history, and maybe you know, create a, create something different. In a way, the hope of a nation is on their shoulders. So um, I think that they will do the best, and they have an edge over Croatia. Okay, let's not waste time. Let's get into the tactics, Ashley. Everyone's waiting for this game. I'm not going to ask you a specific question today. Just look at this and tell us where do you think this game is going to be won for either side? Well, it's an interesting one. Uh, for me, um, Croatia have been better when they've played this three-man midfield with, with Brozovic has sat at the bottom being the defensive one and obviously Rakitic and Modric have both been free to get forward. Mm. But if they are to do that tactic, I think that will play into England's hands. We know England will play the three across the back. Henderson will sit as the defensive midfielder. Lots of width from Young and Trippi on the right-hand side, but England's strengths are Lingard getting it this side of the midfielders and Deli Alli getting this side of the midfielders. So with knowing that, um, you would have to say that um, Croatia will have to change a little bit. Croatia surely must go like this. They must play Rakitic here, they must play Brozovic here, and their job is, is to stop this. But what, what we do, what way I think will happen is because of the way England will split nice and wide with the three central defenders, when the ball is with those three central defenders, you will see the Croatian players just dropping off and they'll be a little bit defensive and they have to protect this kind of area because they can get outnumbered in here, obviously with uh, Henderson joining in. But what I don't want to see happen, which might happen, is Deli Ali and Lingard will, will be coming here and then all of a sudden England will find it hard to, to get the ball through there to these mm. key players and it may just end up being a a bit of a stalemate with possession being played around at the back between the England players just looking for that one player to pop out you know it may be Deli Alli drops deep a midfielder drops out and then all of a sudden it opens up to go a little bit more direct to Sterling down the sides or even maybe into Harry Kane's chest and once we get the ball this side 
of the um, you know the, the the Croatian midfield. Once we get the ball into this range, then that's when you'll see England come into their own really, and they'll start to try and dictate the play. But it's it's beating that mid line of defence, that mm. the mid block, if you like, which is going to be really important. So I think you'll see two sitters from Croatia. Okay, so. France are through to the final and they had their president Emmanuel Macron in the stands for that game. Now English Prime Minister Theresa May won't be travelling because of frosty relations with the Russian regime. But she has wished her team the best for the game tonight. Listen in. Good luck for the team tonight. I met the Croatian Prime Minister yesterday and we exchanged football shirts. Um, Gareth Southgate and the boys have done a fantastic job uh, and I'm sure that they're going to go on to do well. And I just wish them all the very best of luck tonight. Okay, now ever since England reached the knockout rounds, fans in the United Kingdom have been convinced that their team and Ashley's team is going to go all the way to the final. The campaign, it's coming home, has gained popularity over the last two weeks. Here's Vion correspondent Ollie Barrett getting us a sense of what the mood is like in England ahead of tonight's semi-final against Croatia. England in the final of a major tournament for the first time since 1996 and the first time in a World Cup since 1990. So quite a journey this has been so far already. But many England fans are optimistic about what comes next. I reckon we're going to win. I'm feeling pretty positive. What kind of scoreline do you think we're looking at? I'd say 2-1 to England. And who's going to score those goals? Harry Kane. <laughs> I think they'll do all right. They seem to be in with a chance. They're certainly hungry for it, aren't they? And that's the, that's the main thing with sports. What do you reckon? 3-1 uh, Kane Hattrick. 2-1. So it's coming home? It's coming home. Of course it's coming home. <laughs> Thanks, Come on, the boys. <laughs> Croatia will no doubt prove a stern test, though. Luka Modric in midfield, considered one of the best midfielders in world football at the moment. But this England team appears to have optimism and a style of play that they are comfortable with. They also have a manager whose stock has risen throughout the tournament, Gareth Southgate. And uh, the day's been marked as well, earmarked waistcoat Wednesday because of the sartorial example he is now being held up as. Even if England lose in the semi-final, they will come home to reasonably happy fans. If they win, then the status of national heroes are guaranteed. Oli Barrett, London. We know it's waistcoat Wednesday. We just have to look at Ashley Westwood. But, Eugene Sinlingdo, if it is coming home, then England need to shut Luka Modric down tonight. Uh, um, the key, key personnel in uh, Croatia, obviously, Modric and Rakitic, I'd say, the most experienced players. And they, they are very key because he's been dictating games. You could see it in the previous game. And he and Rakitic are very, very vital to their attacking, attacking play. So it's important that they try to do everything that they can to eliminate threat points by these two. OK, eight of England's goals, actually, have come from set pieces. Eight out of 11. Three of the four goals Croatia have considered have been from set pieces. If you ask Gareth Southgate, is that something you want to exploit? I, I think they will. Um, obviously, they, they know them. They've got a few well-drilled ones. Um, you can never guarantee from a set piece. So there's so many elements that have to come into play. Uh, the delivery has to be right first and foremost, which is never guaranteed. You know, you can hit 100 balls and you might only get 10, 15 exactly where you want to put them. Then you have to get the movement right. Sometimes it comes down to a block. And also you have to have a, a lapse of concentration or some poor defending because, uh, you know, this should be easy to, to counteract. This should be easy to defend. But it's always a mistake that leads to a goal being scored from a set piece. So they're never guaranteed. You know, they've been a big plus at the minute. So he won't be hanging his hat on scoring from a set piece, but he knows he's got it in a locker to have multiple threats. You've got Kane. Obviously, Maguire, Stones, all of a sudden, you've got three mm. big lads there. Uh, and, and that is, is quite hard to mark. You, know, you were mentioning this fatigue levels. You know, I've actually got some numbers down. And they ran 132 kilometers against Denmark, 139 against Russia. That's 15 kilometers less than what England have run. That's obviously going to be a factor for you. But you also have to take into account those emotionally scarring uh, penalty shootouts. That's also going to be... That also should have taken a lot out of them for Croatia. I, I mean, uh, mentally, you, you get, can get drained out. Uh, fatigue levels are obviously there. It does take a toll on you. But uh, at the end of the day, I think it's what you have in the heart. I mean, like maybe you're tired, but you want to push, you want to give more. That, it, it comes up to that. I mean, players, it's, they're willing to win. How, 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 how ready are they to fight you know, for that last inch? Mm. So it comes to that. 
Okay, we'll tell you how ready England are going to be to win this because uh, my producer Yash Shah has come up with some fascinating numbers and I'm going to draw Ashley's attention to it. You're going to see it on our screens very soon. Now, we all know England won the uh, World Cup in 1966. So what else happened in 1966? It could be a coincidence, Ashley. Look at this. In 1966, European champions were Real Madrid. They won it this year as well. Manchester City won the league this year, the Premier League, but in 1966, they also won the league they played in. Chelsea finished fifth. They also finished fifth this time. Burnley were in Europe in 1966. According to this, who's winning the World Cup? Well, Omens, they're there for a reason, so yeah. uh, let's all go home now. We know the results, so we don't have to do another show. It's finished. <laughs> <laughs> in 1966, there's one more, Eugene. The reigning Wimbledon champion was knocked out. So the omens are all for Ashley Westwood to throw us a big party on Sunday night. I, I can't bet on that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my heart is with Croatia, though. But I don't know, the omens are saying, let's see what Croatia have in store. Uh, lots of talk about Raheem Sterling. He's hammered by fans, completely hammered. The fan ratings don't have anywhere else. But like you showed us in the last game as well, he gives England a very viable alternative. And also, with Croatia having these tired legs, you would look at England stretching the play a lot, especially with those wide men coming in, really pulling them all over the park. That's, that's going to play into their England's hands. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he gets hammered for records. You know, he's not scored in 24 games. I think two in 42 for England. But at the end of the day, we've already looked how important it is to get Deli Ali and obviously Lingard in behind that midfield, but you can only do that if the, if the play becomes stretched. Ideal world, England want to play through the thirds, get the ball nice and easy into the feet behind the midfield, but sometimes you need a plan B, and he's supplying that. You know, he's the one running down the sides, he's the one running his socks off, you know, stretching things, doing un unforeseen runs. You know, he runs down the side of the 18-yard box, he's not going to score from there, but if the cross comes in, laid back maybe to Trippier, Harry Kane's in the box, so it's... You know, he's a team player. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter if he doesn't score a goal as long as England win. And, and Gareth Southgate's well aware of that. Yes, and he's back those kind of players. So almost out of time, Eugene. I know you said you're a Croatia fan, but uh, give us your prediction for this one. And don't say Croatia are going to win. Well, okay, you can say what you want. <laughs> It'll be a tight game, but uh, giving, uh, because of the experience that Croatia have got, I'd go for a Croatia 2-1 win. Okay, you're breaking Ashley's heart. He's breaking Ashley's heart, but... That's the coach and his players. That's between them. We'll leave, it. we'll leave you out of it. Okay, that's it then on this Wednesday edition of Theatre of Dreams. Thank, time for me to thank Ashley Westwood. And I'm going to remind you that hotels in Noida have strict uh, rules when it comes to making noise in your room at night. So please adhere to that. Uh, Eugene Sinlingdo, make sure that your coach doesn't make too much noise and stop him from jumping into the pool late at night if uh, England win. Uh, Hopefully, Eugenson will keep an eye on Ashley and uh, we're done then. We're just going to remind you that Ashley and Eugenson will be back at 6.30pm on Thursday to look back on this result and set up the World Cup final. We still don't know if it's coming home, but it's time we got home. Good night.